This is a picture commonly shown by Al Gore during his presentations on climate change. When I look at this image, I realize how profoundly developed our civilization has become due to the power of sheer human curiosity. But this image also scares me. It scares me to think that all seven billion of us live on this blue marble of sorts, breathing the same air and treading the same earth. It, it scares me to think that our only home is this tiny pixel on the screen in the void of space. And so despite this vulnerability, the near impossibility of our life on Earth, I'm astounded when I realize that our actions today are putting our planet in an increasingly unstable future, and yet we aren't doing enough to act on it today. In fact, the reason this is happening and the reason we are going down this trajectory is due to our consumption and generation of energy. We use energy to heat up the water we use for our showers, to transport ourselves from one place to another, and we consume it in the form of food to sustain our bodies. So clearly, we need quite a bit of it. In fact, the most prosperous and technologically developed nations are also those that have access to and are consuming the most energy per inhabitant. With this being said, I simply wish we could just pluck some energy out of thin air to power our buildings and buses, but unfortunately, we can't. And so, instead, for the last few decades, we have generated our energy to, through the combustion of fossil fuels, which emit greenhouse gases and cause climate change. And the, so the effects of climate change are really quite drastic. You have extreme heat waves, which can cause stroke, organ damage, and dehydration. You have extensive wildfires that sweep the earth year after year, reducing the air quality and causing lung and heart complications. Vectors such as mosquitoes increase in their geographic ranges and bring along with them diseases such as Zika and Dengue. And finally, and most dramatically, we have extreme weather events, such as hurricanes, which can destroy entire communities, and rising sea levels, which threaten the major cities of our time. And so, with all of this in mind, which seems quite terrible, to be frank, you might be wondering where we stand today. And we know for a fact that today, due to human activity, we stand at one degree Celsius above pre-industrial temperatures, and the effects of this are already noticeable. In recent years, the, mo the five hottest years have on record have occurred since 2010. Additionally, the glaciers are melting, and these are just a few images of these glaciers which have receded over the past few decades. In addition to this, the Antarctic ice is melting as well. Since 1993 to 2016, 119 billion tons of ice have been lost, and this is leading to rising sea levels. Over the past century, 20.3 centimeter increases have been felt in terms of sea level, which threaten major cities. And so, at, our current, at, at, at the present moment, limiting the warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius is the best of many bad situations we can hope for. And so, any warming beyond two degrees Celsius, suppose, would be catastrophic and cause irreversible changes to our planetary ecosystems. At two degrees Celsius, we would have catastrophic effects. Every year, dozens of, within the century, dozens of our major cities, from Miami Beach to, to Jakarta, will go underwater within the century. 400 million people will experience the effects of water scarcity. Additionally, global GDP per capita will shrink by 13%. And so to avoid this, we must think to ourselves about how we can ameliorate our current energy systems. To avoid these catastrophic effects, we require widespread action to transform every area of our economy possible to reduce our emissions. And so, the plan is to reduce our emissions by 45% from 2010 levels by 2030 and to reach net zero emissions by 2050. We have a very short window to act on this plan and it requires coordination 
from all the nations around the world. Unfortunately, however, due to poor political leadership, we have experienced continual warming, and it is likely that we will experience not two, but three to four degrees of warming within our lifetimes. And so what this means for our Earth is that the catastrophes will simply increase. Southern Europe will be in a permanent drought. Northern Africa will have an average drought span of 60 months, which is equivalent to five years. Additionally, eight million more people will be affected by dengue in Latin America. And finally, the global economy will be over 30% smaller than it would have been without climate change. Political leaders today are not acting on their pledges to prevent climate change. In fact, those pledges themselves remain insufficient. Elected climate deniers, such as United States President Donald Trump, are reversing actions taken to prevent climate change. And so what this means is, when our leaders do not speak up for the environment, we must. And in doing so, we make political issues truly personal ones. Limiting the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius is certainly a big ask, but it is certainly possible, and it requires collective action from every one of us, because it is something that we are all responsible for. And so, when I was 13 years old, in the eighth grade, I had the same question in my mind of how I could take action in my community to prevent climate change. And this is when I realized that my school itself was responsible for the emission of two and a half million kilograms of CO2 every single year. And so I worked for months with my school facilities team and a group of very passionate students as well as a local solar energy company to come up with a proposal to install 1,130 panels on our school's buildings. These panels would save the emission of four million kilograms of CO2 over 25 years. And I'm very happy to say that that proposal in fact succeeded. So if my middle school daydream can, can turn into a project of this scale, you can certainly make a real difference. And so I believe the biggest obstacle towards resolving the climate crisis lies between the ears of those around us. It lies in, our, in the, shifting the mindsets of the people around us from our friends to families to coworkers. And so use your voice, engage them in conversations over lunch or perhaps in presentations just like this one, to educate them to properly take action on this issue. Additionally, you must feel free to contact your legislators who represent your interests in the political arena. Even a handful of phone calls from you and your friends can bring an issue to your legislators' attention and make a real difference. Finally, all of us are involved in organizations in some way or form, whether that be your school or your place of work. So use your voice and your position to affect change and encourage responsible business practices with, such as I did in my school. It is not an exaggeration to say that your actions today could affect the lives of tens of thousands in the future. And so with that in mind, you might decide to spend the rest of your life just as you did the day before. Or you could speak up and take action for those generations ahead of us who would want us to act while we still have a fleeting chance. Thank you.